She who wrote in Heduena and women of Mesopotamia from 3400 to 2000 BC is basically the story of women in the third millennium BC. That's over 5,000 years ago. This exhibition seeks to highlight the essential role of women in Mesopotamia. And the focus of the exhibition is the poet, priestess, and princess Enheduena, who is the first known author in history. Among the Morgan's most esteemed collections are a large group of what were called Babylonian cylinder seals, these precious engraved tiny objects that would be rolled out and produced as images and writing for various high-level officials. Morgan has hundreds of them, and we show them in a way that no other museum does. They tell you a great deal about the life, history, culture of early Mesopotamian society, and around this, we wanted to create an exhibition devoted to the high priestess of this culture and the first poet, Enheduanna. For the most part, the world this exhibition transports us to is in the southern floodplains of modern-day Iraq, ancient Mesopotamia. In the late 4th millennium BC, all these cities emerged. And this is just at the time of the invention of writing. And when you have writing, you have a chance to keep track of the flow of goods, to have an exchange of culture. And there's a tremendous boom in interconnections and traveling and importing of objects. Around 2300 or so, an Akkadian king from middle of Mesopotamia and the world of Akkad unifies both the Akkadian world and the Sumerian world in the south into one empire, the first historic empire in world history. And he appoints his daughter, Enheduena, to become the priestess of the moon god in the city of Ur. And she fulfills that role. By the time you get to Enheduena, these writing systems are well established. And one of the things about the exhibition that's so important to me is that we are reinterpreting many of these images of women in literacy in a new light. And Hidoana's writing was extremely important in her time, and much of it still resonates with us today. First and foremost, with this group of temple hymns, she was trying to write a text that would unify all the cultic traditions of this vast landscape. So her mission is to join people rather than separate them. But the exaltation of Inanna, it's the first time you have someone writing autobiographically. It's powerful work where she describes her travails, where a usurper comes and tries to throw her out of her temple and abuses her, implying sexual harassment. She begs the moon god to help, but it is the goddess Inanna, the Sumerian god of love, of fecundity and war, that comes to her aid and saves her, and she's exalted at the end of the poem. It was considered so important that it was one of the 10 texts that was taught for hundreds of years in the scribal schools to teach people how to write. It's my hope that Enheduanna becomes better known and more appreciated because she is the first non-anonymous author in world literature. And it's not just that she's the first, it's that she's writing about concerns that are still with us today. She wrote about her insecurities. She wrote about abuse. She wrote about the creative process, the difficulties of creating a poem, and equates it to giving birth. And if we don't learn about what people have gone through in the past, how are we going to ever be able to fix things in our current moment? So she sets the way. I think we all like origin stories. And so, in a way, to start at the beginning and to have that moment in fourth and third millennia brought to life is something that everyone, I think, can relate to.